Now, in November 2012, Rochdale MP Simon Danchuk made a statement in the House of Commons in which he outed former Liberal MP Cyril Smith as a serial child abuser. Eighteen months on, and with the Lib Dem leader Nick Clegg facing growing pressure to explain what he knew about the case, the ramifications are still being felt. Simon Danchuk has now co-written a book charting what Smith did, his abuse of power, and how he was allowed to get away with it. Written with journalist Matthew Baker, Smile from the Camera, tells the story of a national nationally recognised politician with a dominating personality and the structures around him that allowed his abuses to go unchecked. All this week's smile for the camera has been serialised in a national newspaper. Simon Danchuk joins me now. Good morning, Simon. Good morning. Now, um, do you know, uh, th this is such a chilling story. When you find out what's been happening and then you look at the man, uh, I mean, and some of the reportage in the newspapers is just horrifying. So tell us how you came to write this book with Matthew. Yeah, I think... Uh I admired Smith in many ways. I was a parliamentary candidate in Rochdale fighting uh, in the run-up to a general election some three years before the 2010 general election and learnt that Smith was uh, good at connecting with people, good at speaking with people, very jovial chap, very friendly. Uh, but whilst I was going around uh, doing politics in Rochdale, it became quite clear that there was a much darker side to him and uh, what people were telling me is that he's, he's, he had effectively abused uh, young boys in the town and as we now know beyond. A, an abuse of power. Did, mm. When it was happening, did people realise this was happening? Well, it certainly started, what the, show, the book shows is that it started in 1961. That's the first recorded incident of him abusing a young boy. Uh, he then went on to help establish Cambridge House, uh, which was a boy for sort of wayward boys, uh, a home for wayward boys, and uh, he used that as an opportunity to commit abuse as well. He then gets elected in 1972 to become the Member of Parliament for Rochdale. Uh, as the book documents, he effectively joins a paedophile network in and around Westminster, uh, carries on abuse uh, down there in London, but also back in the 80s and 90s is uh, conducting abuse at a, a, another school, uh, Knoll View School, that doesn't exist anymore in Rochdale, uh, where we've spoken to victims and clearly know that he was carrying abuse there. He was a governor at that school as well. So documentation of this abuse throughout uh, his adult life. Now, because of the Jimmy Savile uh, debacle, mm. you brought the rumours and whispers about Cyril Smith out into the public. Um, when you did it, did you, w were you worried about the backlash, what was going to be said to you? Uh, certainly, as you pointed out at the beginning, I addressed this in a debate in Parliament in November 2012. Uh, we didn't know a tenth of what we know now since we've been investigating this issue and many more victims and uh, ex-police officers have come forward to tell us uh, their stories of investigating uh, Smith but uh, it was a story that, that I believe had to be told and had to be got out there. I was concerned because Initially, I was very much attacked, certainly by people uh, in the Liberal Party in Rochdale and beyond, saying that I shouldn't be making these comments. That well, well because, you, be, you, because they didn't want you to damage the Lib Dems? Well, I presume that. I mean, they were suggesting it was without foundation, but as more victims came forward, uh, they quickly changed the tune. I mean, more more uh, recently, I'm concerned that the Liberals have come out and said they weren't aware of these uh, allegations. Well, I mean, the truth is that uh, Liberal MP Michael Meadowcroft is on the record as saying that he knew about it. The former leader, David Steele, said he challenged Smith about these allegations. Parliamentary candidates local councillors all have all said on the record that they were aware of the allegations against uh, Smith. So I think the lib Liberals need to be less uh, defensive about this issue. I think it would help the victims and everybody else to be able to move on from it a little bit. Now, the fact that this is an historical case, the fact that he's not alive, yes. just like the yeah. Jimmy Savile thing, there will be those yes. who yes. will say to you, Simon, why do it? Why do you need to raise yeah. it so publicly? 
Yeah, um, and there's some important points to make here. I mean, this is very a very different case to some of the celebrity accusations that have been made most recently, uh, where historical abuse allegations have been brought forward. And the difference, quite simply, is that Smith was investigated time and again by the police. There are dossiers upon, uh, b based upon those investigations showing that uh, Smith was guilty. Greater Manchester Police, Lancashire Constabulary and the Crown Prosecution Service have come out and said that uh, he would have been found guilty uh, had he been alive today. Uh, but it's a story that had to be told because, for the sake of the victims, obviously, it also helps Rochdale as a town uh, move on, but it also brings to light abuse and makes us all more aware of what can occur and what comes with power if it's left unchecked. Yeah, I mean, you say it's a shocking abuse of power and that mm. urgent questions of those who allowed Smith to get away with it. And I think that's the one that makes people worry when we then yeah. start mistrusting politicians. Why was he allowed to get away with it? Yeah, I think in the early, in the 60s, I think he got away with force of his personality, the power that he had locally within Rochdale as a councillor, and the fact that his victims were considered unreliable, unreliable witnesses. Uh, he put a strong case forward and the uh, Crown Prosecution Service decided not to take action. But he then becomes an MP in 72, he joins a network, and effectively he is being protected because if he'd been prosecuted, uh, it's, there is no doubt, it, knowing Smith as we do, he would have uh, dropped every other person in that network in it and it could quite literally have brought the government down because there were paedophiles in that network, uh, in government uh, and well connected and had he, had he uh, been prosecuted, uh, it would have created real problems for everybody else in that network. Simon Danchuk, thank you so much for giving us your time. Time. And the book, which is written with Matthew Baker, is called Smile for the, for the Camera. And it does tell the story of a nationally recognised politician with a dominating personality and the structures around him that allowed his abuses to go unchecked.